In this video, I will show you two extensions that you don't want to miss if you're using the GNOME desktop environment. The first extension is called Dash to Dock and the second one is called Dash to Panel. I will show you what they are, how to install them, how to use them and what features they have. In a previous video, I showed you three GNOME extensions, how to snap windows and how to auto-tile windows on the GNOME desktop environment. So if you're interested, the link to the video is up there or down in the description. But before we start, welcome to the channel, here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. I am using Ubuntu 23.04, let's see the specs. So this is Ubuntu 23.04 kernel 6.2 and GNOME version 44. Before we install extensions, first we need to install some dependencies. So let's write sudo app install gnome tweaks and gnome shell extensions. Let's install them. Perfect, now we can close this one and open the first extension. The first extension is called dash to dock. If this is the first time that you're installing an extension, then up here, click on install browser extension, continue to installation, add and allow, ok, now let's refresh the page. If you are now seeing the switch here, then you are good to go. So with this extension you are getting a dock on the desktop. Now if you are using Ubuntu, then you already have a dock, which is this one here on the left. And you can also customize this one if you want, under settings, Ubuntu desktop. Here you can find the dock section and those settings are more or less everything you have. Let's say you want a panel instead, on the bottom maybe a bit smaller icons, somehow like that. Maybe this is already all you need. But if you're not satisfied with this one, then go to extensions. Here you can find the built-in Ubuntu dock and you can disable it. And the dock is gone. Now let's close all of that. Back to the dash to dock extension. We know what a dock is, but what is actually a dash. On the original vanilla GNOME desktop, you can find the dash if you go to activities. And now you can see it down here, so this is the dash. This one is only visible inside activities and if you want to bring this one out, you need an extension for that. Like the built-in Ubuntu dock that we disabled previously, or like this dash to dock extension that we will install right now. So let's install this one. Just click on the switch, install, extension is installed. Now after installing extensions, a good practice is to log out and log back in, so I will do it as well. Now after the login, you can see the dock down here. It looks more or less like the Ubuntu dock. Let's open extensions. Here it is, dash to dock, it's enabled. Let's see the settings. As you can see, this one has more settings. You can show the dock on a particular screen or you can show it on all monitors. The dock is now at the bottom, but you can move it to the left, to the top, which is now hidden. Here it is. And to the right, you can auto hide it. That means if I move the window closer, it will hide it. Now if I move the window back, the dock is back, but you can also disable this one. Then the dock will stay in position. If you enable this one, then you have also further options. You can enable auto hide in full screen mode. Then you have push to show. This means that you need to apply some pressure to see the dock. So move the mouse to the edge and just keep moving and then the dock will show. Then show it on notifications. Then it can dodge all windows, only the focused window, only the maximized window. If I maximize a window now, then it's hidden, or you can have always on top. Now it will not move anywhere, and the windows can still fill the whole screen. And of course you also have the animation durations that you can customize as you want. I will restore the settings and close that, and I actually want to move it to the bottom. Then you have dock size limit, which is at 90%, and that means that the dock can fill 90% here. You can also extend it to the edge of the screen. Then you have something more Windows-like, you can place icons at the center, limit the icon size. If you want really small icons or big icons, you can enable the fixed icon size and also change the preview size scale. Let's continue with appearance. You can shrink the dock, then show overview on startup is enabled, which is basically more or less this one. I don't want it, so I will disable it. You can use a built-in theme, which is this gray one in my case. Or you can customize the colors. Let's say I want this one. And I also want to change the opacity to 50%.
You can also change the window indicators, like squares for instance. If I open a few more windows, then you can see down here every square is a window. Then we have behavior. You have keyboard shortcuts to open the apps. Let's see the settings. You can customize the number overlay, which is like a hint. You can activate this one with super Q. Let's try it out. And now here you can see the numbers. You can see them for two seconds. Let's say I want to toggle through the file windows. I know files is number two. So let's press super two. And now with super two, I can toggle through those. Let's close that. You have a click action. Currently is cycled through windows. But let's say I want show window previews. And if I click on the icon, then I can see the preview down here. And you also have a scroll action. Currently it's nothing, but for instance, you can cycle through windows. So if I scroll, I cycle through. The last tab is launchers. Here you can customize what you actually want to see down here. So let's say you don't want to see the pinned applications. You can disable those. Also for the running applications, you can show only those that are running on the current workspace or only those that are running on the current monitor. Then focused application always visible in the dash, which is obviously on. Then you have the applications icon. You can move it to the beginning. Now you have it in this corner. You can turn off the animations and also move it closer to the other icons. Then you have show trash, show volumes and devices. Then you can isolate those if you want. Now the separator is here. I don't know if you can see it. Then you have wiggle urgent applications. You have hide tooltip. And the last one is notification icons. If I open this one, for instance, I know I will have update notifications. And yes, I have updates. Down here you can see the notification icon, but if you don't want to see those, then you can also disable them. So as you can see, you have a lot of options here to customize. A lot more than the built-in Ubuntu dock, definitely. The only problem I have with docks like this one is that they take up a lot of space. Because I also have a panel here at the top, and then I have a dock here at the bottom. For me personally, it would be nicer if I could combine those two into one. And that's exactly what the next extension is doing, so let's take a look at dash to panel. So here we have dash to panel, and this is how it will look like. So let's install this one, click on the switch, and install. You can already see the panel down here. I will open extensions, disable dash to dock and leave the dash to panel enabled. And now I will log out and log back in. Now after the login, here is the panel with the application icons on the left and the system tray on the right. The default GNOME panel that was on the top was merged together with the dock into this panel at the bottom. And by default, it actually looks more Windows-like. Let's see the settings, dash to panel, settings, as you can see, this one has more settings than the dock, but most of them are very similar, so I will cover those only briefly and focus more on the ones that are different. On the position tab, you can choose on which monitor you want to show the panel. Then you also have auto height with similar settings as the dock. The main difference here is that you have a shortcut which basically toggles auto height on or off. So if you press super I, then the panel is shown and auto height is more or less disabled, and you can enable it back with super I again. Then, you can position the panel at the bottom, where it is right now, but it can also be on the right, on the left, or at the top. You can change the panel thickness, if you want really small icons, or really big icons, and also specify the panel length, if you want that it looks more like a dock, and you can also position it at the left, at the right, or at center. I actually like the full length panel. Then this one is very interesting. Here you can specify the position of those individual boxes inside the panel. So let's say I want to move the application icon to the right, I can do so by moving it here. Maybe I want to center it, or center the taskbar, or switch the position of those two, like that. Or change the application icon itself by defining a new icon instead of the default one. So as you can see, you have a lot of customization options here. I actually don't want to see the application icon. And I also don't want to see this desktop button here, so I will make it invisible. And I will make the taskbar monitor centered. So this looks fine. And let's move to the next tab, which is style. Here you can style the individual icons. Let's say I want a more compact view and even decrease padding. Then you have the hovering animation, which is also a very nice visual feature. And you can even customize it further by fine tuning the animation. You can change the animation type, duration rotation, travel, zoom, 
convexity and extent. So you really have full control here. I will reset to defaults and let's move on. Then you have the running indicator, which is now at the bottom, but it can also be at the top, at the left or at the right. I actually like it at the top. Then you can change the focus style. I like squares and also the unfocus style, which I will set to dots for instance. But that's not all. You can customize this even further. Let's say I want bigger indicators or change the indicator color to the dominant color of the icon, which is in this case green. If I open a few of those, those are blue. Or we can even set a different color if we have one window open, two or three. Let's say I want this one to be orange. Now here I have three windows and this one is orange. And you can also do the same thing for the unfocused. If you like customizing colors, then this one will definitely make you happy. I actually like the dominant color. And let's move on. Then of course you can overwrite the panel color. Let's say I want this one. Overwrite the opacity. Let's say 50. Or set dynamic background opacity. Or even set a gradient if you want. So visually you can change almost everything. Then inside the behavior tab, you can change which icons you want to show. The favorite icons, running applications, or the app menu button. Then this one is interesting. This is the hover animation. We already saw it. So while you hover, you can see the previews and also have a peek which window this is. And also select it if you want. But then again, you can customize this even further. You can change the animation time. Middle click on the preview to close the window. Then change the preview size. Let's say 150. You can change opacity. Button and header position. Right now it is at the top. But we can change it to be at the bottom. Now you have the header at the bottom. Or you can remove the headers completely. Now it's without headers. And if you don't want window peaking, you can disable that. No window peaking anymore. I actually like it that way. And let's move on. Then you can also show only applications that are running on the current workspace or on the current monitor. Then you have the overview settings. You can show it at startup, but I actually like it disabled as it is. Then we have actions. This one is more or less the same as the dock settings. So you have a click action, scroll action and hotkeys. If I enable those, then you also get the super Q shortcut, which shows the numbers here. So let's say with super 2, I can toggle the file windows. Moving on to the final tab, fine tune. Here you can change font sizes of the tray icons and of the left box, this one here. I will leave those at 16. Then you can change the padding, turn off animations. And if you want to see the default GNOME panels, let's say the top panel, which I actually don't want to see. Or maybe you want to see the dash. Currently it's disabled, no dash here. But if I enable that, then the dash is back. I actually don't want that. So as you can see, this one has more fine tuning potential than the dock, especially the Ubuntu dock, which has just a few options. And by the way, this full Ubuntu that I'm running right now is running exclusively from RAM and RAM only. You probably already saw the RAM usage in NeoFetch at the beginning of the video. So if I open System Monitor, here as you can see, I have 15.7 gigabytes memory in use at 97% capacity. So the entire root partition is loaded into RAM. And I have to say, I love how fast it is with everything inside RAM. I also made a video about it. So if you're interested how to run full Ubuntu from RAM only, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like my content, if you think it's helpful, then please give a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.